guys, welcome to the YouTube channel. We're gonna get right into this topic. Everybody wants to know this. Now, I do a lot of Novation Agreements. I teach Novation Agreements, but I rarely talk about it on the YouTube channel. It's a little bit more of a ninja strategy in terms of acquiring and fixing and flipping a property. Now, first thing you wanna know about a Novation Agreement is that the strategy with a Novation Agreement is always going to be a purchase and flip. You're not gonna hold it. It's not a long-term investment. Novation Agreements are a fix and flip strategy only. Now, there are three types of ways to do a Novation Agreement. First and foremost, let me explain to you what a Novation Agreement is. A Novation Agreement is where I go to a seller. Let's say that a seller has a house and let's say the seller's name is Eric because this guy Eric has a videography business and he's pretty dope. But you know what, Eric's like, I'm ready to sell my property. I want top dollar. I'd say my house is worth $400,000 on Zillow or whatever, right? MLS, whatever. That's the ARV, $400,000. And he knows that his house is kind of run down because he's been treating it like a studio and beating the shit out of it. So he knows that it's kind of run down. He needs to sell it for, at a discounted price. There's all sorts of investors that are offering like 275, right? That's where typically most investors are going to offer is two. $275,000. Eric says, you know what, dude, like that's not good for me. I don't want that $275,000. But you know, if I could get $300,000, I would sell. Well, the challenge there is that everybody's offering him 275. So the obvious answer is for a straight cash deal. The market is telling you, Eric, that this house should be sold for $275,000. A novation agreement is technically your ability of telling the seller, I want to fix and flip your property without ever buying it. Yes, that is correct. I want to fix and flip your property, Eric, without ever buying it, okay? Now, there are three ways to do this. A novation agreement allows me to pay more money for that seller's property because I'm actually not buying the house. That's right, I'm not actually buying the house. I'm committing to give the seller a number after I renovate it and sell the property. Now, you might be asking, how in the hell are you gonna renovate a house and sell that house if you are never the owner? Guys, that's pretty simple. Let's imagine that I have a friend or a neighbor that has a car that's just beaten down and sitting in the driveway. Could I not just fix up that car and clean it up, go sell it for my neighbor and say, I'll give you a thousand dollars and I keep everything above that? Well, that's a novation agreement. I didn't have to buy the car until I cleaned it up sold it to my buyer, let's say for $2,000. I get $2,000 and I pay off my neighbor. I did a novation agreement with my neighbor's car. I promised a number to him. My neighbor doesn't care how much money I make. I just take that asset, that car, that house, that whatever. I clean it up and I go sell it to a buyer and I keep everything above what I promised the seller. That's a novation agreement. Okay, or one version of a novation agreement. There's actually three ways to do it. I go to Eric and I go, I'll give you 300 grand. So what I'm gonna do, Eric, is I'm gonna go renovate the property. Now, another question starts coming up of where do you get the money? If I'm not gonna buy the house from Eric at 300, I'm just gonna promise him that when I sell it for 400, I'm gonna make sure that that 400 grand comes to me and I will then pay off Eric his 300 grand that I previously promised him. See how that kind of works? A third way to do it is bring on a financial partner, like an uncle, a cousin, a this, a that, or whatever and bring them in have them pay for the renovation so you're literally promising Eric you'll give him 300 grand you're then borrowing money from your uncle your cousin your whatever to pay for the renovation you then go sell the house for 400 grand when you receive the 400 grand you pay off Eric's 300 you pay off your lender whoever ended up being your uncle your monkey's uncle whatever and you keep all the rest that's a novation agreement what's great about this is that you never had to buy the property you never had to pay for title insurance you never had to get a hard money loan you never had to pay for closing costs. You never had to do any of that stuff. And so those things cost a tremendous amount of money. So if you're a cash buyer getting beat out by $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 by other cash buyers, chances are those cash buyers have probably learned how to do novation agreements from me. And so what that means is they don't have to actually close escrow, pay the fees, get a hard money lender, pay lender fees, pay hard money, do anything with title insurance whatsoever. So that's a novation agreement. Now there's three ways to do it. These are the three ways to do a novation agreement. Number one, we call this a net listing. Okay, a net listing is essentially, okay, a net listing is where I'm an agent and I go to a seller and I say, hey seller, can I list your property for you? The seller says, yeah, but honestly, I just want a guaranteed number. Like give me a number that you can guarantee me. And I, as the agent, I'm not an agent by the way, but let's say I was, I go, okay, I'm gonna give you a piece of paper that says, I guarantee you, I will give you $300,000. And I, as the agent, then go clean up that property and I put it on the MLS. MLS 
MLS stands for Multiple Listing Service for anybody that doesn't know that. That's where most people, most real estate agents find their deals is the MLS. Every state has one, every county has one. I put it on there and I find a family that wants to buy that property for $400,000. Okay, well, cool. That $400,000 essentially comes to me. I'm keeping this very simple. I teach this in depth in my sub2.com course, but that $400,000 comes to me. Then I pay off that $300,000 to the seller and I essentially get paid $100,000 minus any of my costs, like paint, carpet, if I did any of those things. And sometimes you don't, sometimes you do. Every deal is a little bit different. A net listing is the first type of novation agreement. A second type of novation agreement is where I, as the real estate investor, this is where I just call it a novation, okay? A, a standard novation. I go to the seller and do exactly what I would have done if I'm an agent. I'd say, hey, seller, you want 300K. I promise you on this document called a novation purchase agreement, I promise you I will get you $400,000 after I sell it to the buyer. I'm gonna come in, use my money or my uncle's money, and I'm gonna fix up the property and I'm gonna sell it for 400. After I pay the fees and all the things associated, I pay my lender back, my uncle, I will then give you $300,000 and whatever's left over, I get to keep all of that. The third way to do a novation agreement is a partnership with the seller. Partnership with the seller, where you, the seller says, well, I want $300,000. And I've done this multiple times where I go, well, seller, I think the house is gonna sell for 400 grand. And the seller will go, I think it will sell for way more money because sellers, you know, one of my favorite sayings ever is buyers are liars, sellers are worse. And sellers believe their house is worth way more than it is always. Like I've never met a reasonable seller. Are they out there? I'm sure maybe there are some, but I've never met them. A seller says, I believe my house is gonna sell for $425,000. Okay, well, why don't we structure this in a way that if we do sell it for over $400,000, anything at $300,000 and below, everything's yours. Everything between $300,000 and $400,000 is mine, and anything over $400,000, we split, okay? That would be a partnership that you can structure with that seller. Here's the problem with a novation agreement. It's going to create more questions for you than I probably have answered. There's so many things of like, well, how do I protect my lender? How does the title company know how to handle these transactions? Guys, these are things I'm never gonna teach you. I teach my sub two students novation agreements and I go in depth on exactly how to structure them, the paperwork, all the legal structures. In fact, my first student, DJ Martin, that ever did a novation agreement was a year and 10 months ago, third day of my mentorship. He comes into one of my Q and A's and he goes, Pace, I've got a problem. The seller's asking like 10 grand too much money. They won't negotiate. I've tried everything. I go try a novation agreement. DJ Martin was like, say what? What's a novation agreement? I taught him what a novation agreement is. He went on to make $80,000 in saving a seller from foreclosure. Novation agreements are sick. So check in the links down below for some additional help and I'll see you in the next freaking video.